So, good evening, everyone. We're starting very close to the advertised time this evening because we want to make sure that we get as much possible time to talk to Joy and also to allow time for drinks for those of you who are going to the dinner afterwards. I'm Yasmin Khan. I'm a fellow of the college and I teach history. And it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Joy Richardson. I know many of you know who Joy is, but she's an actor, a writer, an artist, and um, she's been very heavily involved with Kellogg, both as a student here, um, completed the MST in creative writing, having held uh, art exhibitions here, two, yes, two, exhibitions, two exhibitions, and as a, as a friend of the college. Joy was born in Guyana and um, then grew up in Hackney after that, and has lived in Hackney. And um, she has worked in, in all the prestigious theatres, National Theatre, Shakespeare's Globe, Royal Shakespeare Company, in the West End, in television and in film. And this evening we're going to see the episode, the first episode of The Long Song, which was screened first, it premiered on BBC in December BBC 2018. Yes. BBC One. Three days in um, succession. Three days right. in succession uh, in December 2018. And uh, it's based on Andrea Levy's novel, and we're going to have a discussion afterwards about some of the very big themes yes. that, it rise, uh, that, it, that uh, arise in the film. Um, so for about half an hour afterwards, uh, to do with the film's topics of slavery, racism, exploitation, <laughs> and we will try and cover as much as we can, although it's, it's going to be a short window of time. So at the very end, we won't take questions here. Joy has very um, gracefully said that she will uh, be happy to talk to people individually uh, in sort of questions <coughs> after we finish at seven o'clock. So for, for 15, 20 minutes afterwards, do sort of mingle and, and talk yes. to Joy and ha over a drink and so forth. So um, without further ado, <laughs> we'll be pleased to screen the long song now. And uh, it's about an hour long. And then we will come back here and we will continue our conversation. Thank you very much. And that was part, part three. So for those of you who haven't seen part, part one, you'll still glean something from it. But I've seen it several times and it seems like every time I see it, it becomes more and more affecting, um, which I didn't expect, really. Yeah, it's, deep, it's, it's deeply affecting. And I just want to ask you what it must have been like to be there filming that, because if it's effective, affecting to watch that as a yes. member of, a, of an audience just on a screen to actually be there yes. and acting <laughs> in that production I'm, that well, must have been affecting it, it was in a different way what message comes across at the end of the film which has hit me more is the fact that July Miss July who's telling her story which she tells from the time that she's conceived right through to that final scene is all hers is just one story of many lives and many of those stories will never be told they've been forgotten um, and I think Andrea Levy in giving it that personal diary feel where she thinks of many possibilities the way her life could have been different to what it actually is um, just reminds me of the millions of enslaved people whose stories we may discover, but it's affecting us now, today. The legacy is here and now. And me working on the long song was an extraordinary experience. It really was. It was filmed in the Dominican Republic, although it's set in Jamaica. And the role that I play is Miss Rose, who is the enslaved person who is a midwife. So over the years, I deliver many babies, look after many of the women and their um, children. So I've seen a lot. I've had my own children, my own children have died. But actually being there in the cane fields, learning to cut cane, avoiding their tarantulas. <laughs> There's one point we stood on a nest of tarantulas, but were advised that they were not poisonous. Um, <laughs> but it was an extraordinary experience. It brought it home and it was affecting. So long after we finished filming, I was there for five, five weeks, um, it affected me, it affected all of us um, because it's a hidden history that I think very few people in this country know and were shocked by. Because so often in dramatizations of slavery, we see the American yes. story I mean, roots and there are other um, films, 12 Years a Slave, there's be, there have been American um, 
depictions of slavery, but I think it's that connection to the British imperial experience yes. in this that really hits home when you watch it. Yes, because we don't see it, and I don't understand why it's such a hidden history. Um, is it a choice? Is it that um, people don't want to hear, the money isn't there? So it's quite extraordinary to work on this production because you just do not see the <coughs> British size of the Caribbean who um, were enslaved for 200, 300 years and um, whose descendants are living here and who families, because it's about family, the film is about families, what happens if you are living under a system where families are divided without notice, split up. There's one person who I met who approached me um, in the street after having seen the long song. And there's a scene where Miss July, when she's a little girl, age seven, is taken away by Miss Caroline to be a house slave. And the lady who I spoke to said, I can't believe that they could really do that. Did they really do that? <laughs> and where do I begin? <laughs> where do I get, um, begin to say, well, actually, um, 12 million, mm. at least 12 million um, people were taken from Africa. And the biggest slave owners were in Britain, from the north to the south to the east, um, to the West, and in one year, 60% of the economy of the UK was directly from slavery. And to have that scale and it still be an unknown history is, is fascinating. And um, I think frightening because it gives people a wrong perspective on what um, it means to be a country hosting such a multicultural um, population. And that's where the title's interesting, The Long Song, yes. and that idea of the general, because I think episodes one and two, obviously it starts in the, in the time of slavery yeah. and it moves out of the time, the, the yes. people are not, not slaves anymore, but it's, it's <coughs> showing that long duration. Yes. So it's not just that it's one moment. No, but it's, it's a moment of transition. It's a moment of transition over a long yes, period of time. Yes, over a long period of time. And um, you said something interesting to me about my history doesn't start with Yes. Slavery. I just thought it'd be interesting to talk yes, about that. Yes, that's interesting because I think part of what inspired Andrew Levy's um, novel was when someone said to her, um, every time slavery is mentioned, I feel embarrassed. I feel ashamed. And then other people were saying um, on um, Twitter, my history does not begin with slavery. Mm -hmm. I had a culture before then, I had um, a long history, but yet what's affecting the conversations today is as if the history of um, the black diaspora and Africans and Caribbeans started with slavery. Um, and that is your identity. That's your starting point. Um, so a lot of history has been erased and um, it's not really taught in schools. It starts with the slave trade. So we have a very skewed perspective of the history of people from um, the black mm. diaspora. So that some of the power of the story in the film is, is that individualization in a way as well yes. of telling individual stories that people relate to in terms of the, the life stories and the yeah. life narratives. Yes, it is, because once we start talking about numbers, we forget each person was an individual that, um, with love and fears and the terror of the system which they live under. And the role that I have to play um, as an actor, the first thing you try to do is to get into your character. What does the character think? What do they fear? What do they eat? What's their favourite colour? Um, to give, them the give, give the character a history, so that when you identify that closely, you start to feel and can be that character. So thinking about um, what the history of my character is living under those circumstances under so many years and how she touched the lives of the different people there wasn't just about delivering babies. The whole system of slavery was that you had no right to life. 
you were chattel. But these enslaved people, they resisted. So the picture in the books, when you think about numbers, are of victims, not people who resisted, people who fighted, uh, fought, people who tried to make the world a better place. People who did, like you see mm. her son Thomas, who she decided, rather than having been raised in that violent system, being tortured, um, being, um, having no future, that she would leave him on the doorstep and he was taken to England as a baby and he's one of the few who were able, who was able to have a life, training, education and be quite a wealthy man. And he came back to search for his mother, whereas her daughter who was taken the way that she was taken from her mother, she may never see see ever again but it is a personal story did you ever feel there were things that were beyond depic <coughs> depiction though? yes because i mean there's a sense there is a tension isn't it between entertainment in a way of yes. sorts you know people watching this in their living rooms yes and the real experience that's it i yes there's a fine line because of course the brutality the tortures the amputations and the you know you cannot show and expect people to come back and watch the second episode or the third episode so a lot of what went on had to be um, censored for television if you see 12 years a slave that is very different mm -hmm. um, but here the focus was on the the struggles the resistance rather than the voyeurism which can sometimes happen when you look at people being um, oppressed and um, subjugated. So we see in the subtle form just how people resisted on a day-to-day -day level um, to how, for example, the, the Christmas Day rebellion, which is in the first episode, um, you see something that actually happened in history where people expected emancipation because they were promised it. And when it didn't happen, they decided that a peaceful protest would be, certainly um, could make a difference. But they were attacked and hundreds of enslaved people were killed, of which maybe 500 were hanged or um, tortured. You can't show that mm. um, because people wouldn't come back and watch the next episode. But the violence is implied throughout, um, but yes. And, and what sort of responses did you have? Because you, you've mentioned that yes. one person who approached you, but generally, how do you, do you does it change people's kind of views to, to watch something um, like this? The response was a lot of it was gratitude that this was revealed, that it was something that people didn't know and wanted to see. It, the first um, part, part one, I think, had over three and a half million viewers. Um, in um, the UK, which we didn't expect, mm. which was extraordinary. Mm. There's a lot of questioning. Um, how come we don't know about this? Mm. How come we don't <coughs> know that the UK um, was the largest supplier of slaves? Um, you see that Robert, the young man who was the father of the child, he is from Scotland and he takes the child back to England. I didn't know I thought of Scottish, of course my surname is Scottish <laughs> apparently, but when I started looking back I thought this is my history, this is the history of everyone really, it's not just the history of people who are of African descent because the world was involved from Europe to the Americas to um, Britain, it was a global phenomenon of which existed for over 400 years and um, yes that is hard to get your mind around that so Andrew Levy was trying I understand to um, say well what if we look at it from one woman's perspective where she says her story is like a long song and what we couldn't depict as well was this book starts with Julian's mother giving birth and the father, who is the plantation um, overseer, who was raped, the uh, mother, he comes in and he just wants her to be quiet and he threatens to beat her up. And I stand in the way, willing to take the blows. Meanwhile, I'm trying to keep her quiet. Mm -hmm. So there's the emotional trauma 
there is the sacrifice, there is the day-to-day -day battle. But with a film, when you adapt it, you can't tell every aspect of it. So a lot of se is said in pictures, but you have to uh, just leave out um, things which do not push the story forward. So I would say it's definitely something, um, another layer, <coughs> many other layers in reading the book and many layers here um, in seeing the film. Yes. And, and how involved was Andrea Levy in the adaptation? I mean, sadly, she died yes. didn't, uh, recently, didn't yes. she? But yes, she did. But she had a hand in the ab yes, adaptation. Yes, she did. Um, it was quite incredible because when we were filming every day, she would be sent some of the rushes so she, she could see them because she was too ill to come over and be with us filming. And she would send messages of how delighted she was, how it exceeded her expectations, how grateful um, she was. And that meant a lot to, to us because not only are we, um, do we have the responsibility of telling these stories, but it's her vision. Mm. It's something which is close to her heart. And um, she also sent a book to each of us um, and she wrote an inscription and mine was thank you for bringing Miss Rose alive. So she was very much hands-on from a distance and of course Sarah Williams who adapted it, they work closely together and um, Mahalia um, Bello who directed it was incredible to work with such insight, such humanity, such grace. Um, it was an extraordinary experience, very happy, but also worrying because working in the cane fields, if we could say working, but being in the cane fields, the supporting cast were the Haitian workers who have a stateless, um, uh, they're stateless in the Dominican Republic and they work for the pittance and yes, we felt that we were seeing what we were acting when we were there every day. Yes. So did it change, I mean, I'm sure you knew a lot before about slavery, but did it change your uh, sort of perspective on history? It did. Yeah. It very did because more, more and more I started thinking about what is happening now. For example, the wind rush. Um, the wind rush issue, the wind rush scandal where people who came over here from the Caribbean on the first large boat, the Empire wind rush in 1948, um, the way recently it's come yeah. to light last year that <coughs> how many of them were deprived mm. of their legal right, their legal status to stay in this country and have been forcibly deported or not allowed back into the country. <coughs> And if people do not know what the history is, they may think, well, they may not take it as um, seriously, thinking, what are they doing here? But I just think, I came over here, um, and as one of many people who came over here, although I was born in Guyana, South America, and I could so easily, despite being a British citizen, be deported back. And my mother and I know people who have been deported. So it changed my mind. It has more resi um, resonance. And I feel the important thing is for discussions to happen, to raise awareness, because there is a fear around even raising the subject of um, slavery and the history of this country. People are frightened mm -hmm. of um, causing fear, offence, it's a very emotional subject mm. and it can easily be misunderstood but there's so much to gain mm. from discussion if we are all willing to listen, to talk. I mean that, wind, that whole Windrush episode was extraordinary in yes. the sense that there was this sudden, after Brexit and, and all the, the, the language around that, there was suddenly this upsurge of support in a, yes. in a popular way that actually sort of spanned even the tabloid press for these Brexit <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sort of supporting papers were suddenly sort of su s critical of the Home Secretary and it caused her resignation yes. and of the whole context in which that, win that Windrush scandal happened. Yeah, I couldn't help thinking it was completely detached from a longer durée picture about empire it or slavery. Yes, it is, because the legacy that we have is certainly of um, the them and us, the... Um, getting over or trying to come to terms with and change 
stereotyping mm. in the long song we see how the enslaved people are seen as invisible as sh they're being shamed their their dignity is being denied and the projection that they are there to serve um, still exists today the where people may think about the stereotypes you see on television or film or um, which promote the misunderstanding of not only the culture and history but of different races and that is something which this country loses out on because when you deny talent when you project a stereotype then it just means people do not reach their potential they're not able to grow and for those in power um, those who have the power to help like be it the education system um, uh, the political system whatever there it's it just needs to change there needs to be greater mm -hmm. understanding because everybody loses out so it does seem like there's a moment now where there there are things afoot Cambridge University for instance looking now at the history of slave money in its institutional kind of base and um, this yes. massively influential legacies of slave ownership project at UCL which has tracked slave uh, in sort of created wealth yes actually. and the way that actually lots of middle class people um, in Britain had had shares in in, in slave even yes. if they didn't go to the Caribbean no. they were invested <laughs> in that wealth absolutely so, um, do you think I mean is it too optimistic to think that there is a kind of different kind of public it's just happening? It's, it's starting um, for example Cambridge University have set up a, as I believe a working party mm -hmm. to look into their connection how they benefited mm -hmm. from the money earned from slavery in um, Scotland lots of the place names the road names are named after slave owners people who made their fortunes um, off of the slave trade many of them who never went to the plantations which they owned mm -hmm. and there is discussion with but when you see these figures these statues these these names instead of having in the history books that this person was a planter or a merchant maybe it should also have a slave trader because that is true that is true when you have a monument a statue of someone in the square that history is a slave trader well, there's been the whole thing about Codrington in in um, Bristol and the whole kind of yes. discussion about how uh, how you kind of portray statues and change the, the you know reflect on that kind of labeling yes it is because you imagine I did a tour um, to Bristol where we were touring mm. the winter's tale Shakespeare's winter's tale and walking around with the names that you recognize as plantation owners what does that do, do to you? They're, you know, it's celebrated. They're, what does it do to you? What does it say? And that is the question. How do we not know? How is that acceptable? Mm -hmm. And what is the impact? And there's a resurgence now of things, you know, the black face, which is where people black up and they wear the woolly wigs and fashion labels have this and the answer when people say you have caused offence they say sorry I didn't know and you think how could you not know and if that is the case do you want to know what can be done because what there's a consequence to these this promotion of stereotypes on a day-to-day -day basis and it's impacting on us now so <coughs> film and television is somewhere where that's often discussed a lot because people talk about um, the roles that are available or people being behind camera. So you, you might get black actors in front of camera, but what's happening behind in terms of the production and yes. actually kind of making things. I mean, what's your experience of Well, it's changed that? over the years. Um, what's happening now, there is more awareness, but I'm still disappointed at the number of stereotypes where you will see um, often the roles are the black actor is portrayed as someone who's less intelligent or someone who's not the protagonist, someone who's not the mover and shaker. I grew up watching films <laughs> whereby you think, okay, when is the black actor going, going to die? You've got a Tarzan film now. Okay, which of the black people carrying is going to die? And it's still happening now, you know, where you get black <laughs> actors sacrificing their character, sacrificing their life. 
unable to um, make the correct judgments, falling into a trap in order to show how the hero will make a better judgment and will survive. And so was the long song a, a kind of different experience of, of working in that, in that respect? I mean, yes, was there a different feeling saw, around the Yes, production? absolutely, because you saw the, the variety of mm. humanity. That mm. was what's so exciting. It wasn't stereotypes, it was people. Mm. There was a variety. You'd get people who thought differently about um, their positions mm -hmm. that they were in. You saw the struggle between... Um, you know, like, for example, Miss July falls in love with Robert, who is the new plant plantation owner. And at the start, you see their relationship grow and develop. And he comes with such hope and such liberal attitude. But the system, in the end, changes that. It just crushes mm. him. Um, but the film, I think, ends with hope. Mm. Definitely with, with um, hope. But... It doesn't mitigate all the pain and the fact that there's one person whose life was destroyed but ends up meeting her son again. And, and it's really striking the gender element as well. I mean, that relationship with the, with the wife and the whole kind yes. of the, the sort of layers of, of gender dynamics between everybody in that film is, yes. is um, really powerful, I think. It really is powerful. Um, they do not show a character as a bad person or a good person in the film um, and the book, of course, the aim was to show humanity that um, under very difficult circumstances, how does one human being treat another where the system is saying, this is the way things are, that, that there is an equality, which inequality that cannot be breached no matter how hard you try. And then when we see the transition, um, in fact, when slavery was, ab when the slave trade was abolished and then slavery, there was about four years when the enslaved people had to work for nothing. They had to stay on the plantation. And in fact, their lot grew worse because the slave owners knew they only had a short amount of time to get the labor out of these people. So the hours they worked increased the amount of um, the intensity mm -hmm. of the labors, the flogging in, you know, just grew and grew. And there was an increase in the number of deaths as well. And for the women who were pregnant, they had to work just as hard as the men up until maybe a month or so before um, delivery of the baby. And there's one figure where they said in um, Jamaica in one year where 156 babies were born, only f by the time the child reached 15, only 15 children were left. So over 135 children died because the children were also put into work gangs where they had to work. And you're coping with the tropical diseases, but exhaustion. The slaves were never healthy. And I, I hate using the word slaves because that straight away dehumanizes them. That's why I say the enslaved peoples. Um, thank you. I mean, we're going to draw it to a close in a minute, but I just wondered if there's anything else that you wanted to kind of say to us or convey to us about the, the whole kind of process of, of making this film and the... the what it means to you, I suppose. Yes, what it means to me is having these conversations. This would never have happened unless I made the film. Other conversations will. But the thing with a film is that everybody's seeing the same Im images, whereas the book maybe has reached, I don't know what the sale, um, uh, you know, how, how many mm. people have bought it. But all over the world, people will get a chance to hear this story. And I was part which are of this story, giving a voice, which for I'll be eternally, eternally grateful because I will have conversations with people. I will learn from you. I will learn from whoever I am speaking to. And maybe those people who I have conversation with, such as my family and friends and strangers who are interested, will look further 
we'll have other conversations because I think that's what gives me hope is that we all have a voice, we all have the option. Once you see something, you hear about it, you can't unsee it. So the question is, what do you do with that knowledge? And what responsibility do you take for making a change? And sometimes a conversation is all that <laughs> is necessary, and then you take it from there. Thank you very much Thank indeed, you. Joy. And on that note, the conversation will continue um, this evening. Now, Joy said she'd be very pleased to talk to everybody um, individually over drinks uh, to continue that conversation. Absolutely. So I think um, I would just like to thank you very much for uh, coming this evening, for sharing the film with it's us and for, for talking so eloquently about it. Thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.